سبحان الله سبحان الله حمدا لله حمدا لله ولا اله الا الله ولا اله الا الله والله اكبر والله اكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to Al Hikma TV. My name is Naima Khan and I'll be your host for today's segment of Who's Who in America and the Community. This program brings to you individuals who have dedicated and committed their lives to serving Allah. They come from a wide cross section of the community which involves the local, national and international levels. We hope that their story will serve as an inspiration for you to get involved in the community. Today my guest is Brother Nasheed Sabir, attorney at law. But Nasheed, assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the program. Wa alaikum assalam. Thank you very much. It is certainly it's a pleasure to have you. I know you've been in this community for a long time. Give us a little bit about uh, background on your history and your involvement in South Florida. Born and raised in Miami. Um, oh, good. You're, South, you're Miamian. <laughs> okay. Native, native yes. Floridian. Okay. Not many of us, okay. as folk, folks say. Um, went to community college here, then left to go to school in Georgia. Small, small black, historically black college in mm -hmm. Fort Valley, Georgia. Um, it was there through just reading and, and um, lo love to read. Um, read a lot of information uh, from the Pan-African organizations, which kind of led me to Islam. At that time, it was most of the African Americans that were involved in Islam were either from part of Noble Drew Ali or the Nation of Islam. The Nation of Islam had a limited effect on me um, in terms of diet. It, my roommate and I, when we left Miami going to college, we decided that we were not going to eat pork. And that's uh, before you learned anything about or, Islam? I know anything about Islam, okay. but it was just from the Nation of Islam's right. um, teachings. Mm -hmm. And um, just from reading books, we ordered books online and just got information. Uh, when I left college to come to Miami to start law school, I attended Nova, um, Nova's Law Center mm -hmm. um, in 1978. My um, then roommate, invited me to Nashville and Sar. He had, um, Ramadan had just ended and um, what interested him was he saw all of the folks from the different cultures on Yerim's campus um, celebrating Id. So uh, that's how he became interested in Islam. Um, but when, back up a little bit, when we left, when he left uh, Fort Valley a little early than I did to attend engineering school at University of Miami, um, and um, so there was about a two-year period, and we really didn't see one another. But when I came here, it was just interested. It was the interesting fact was that he invited me to National Sar, not knowing that I had been studying Islam on my own. So came a member of National Sar in 1978, and um, I was in law school at the same time. Um, most of my professors and students um, embraced the fact that I accepted Islam. So you did not have any opposition, nobody treated you any differently. How old were you at the time? I was whew, about 24. Okay. And, That's um, young. <laughs> yeah, um, the interesting thing was mm -hmm. the, my um, Jewish classmates really helped to make sure that I had a, a room to pray in. Really? Yeah, and, their, uh, and their, um, what they told me was that they knew about the Quran, but they studied the Quran like they would have studied an algebra book or a science book. But they also said they realized that if, they had, if there was a place for me to pray, then if they needed to pray, they would have a place to pray As that well. wouldn't have symbols mm -hmm, and other mm -hmm. things that, that would be uh, offensive to them. So what was the reaction like when you embraced Islam at the age of 24 to what you think people now embracing Islam currently? Do you see any differences? Um, I think then there was um, still a, well, it, there was some hostility um, towards African Americans from some accepting Al Islam. And just a racial just, issue. Just, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. But um, for the most part, um, people were, were pretty um, um, open minded to it because mm -hmm. you have to understand the Nation of Islam had had a, few, a huge impact in the African American community and in the, com and in the nation at large. Right. Um, so, some, so people were aware of Islam, but not Islam proper. Mm -hmm. So they just knew what they'd heard from. So the, um, you got involved through the Nation of Islam initially? No. No. Then when I when I accepted Islam in seventy eight, Imam Muhammad, um, Warthi Muhammad had already, already made, taken over. made yeah, taken over and made okay. that conversion. 
So it was a different experience for me. Oh, good, because I know there are people who they, they, you know, transfer from the Nation of Islam concept to what Islam is, you know, Orthodox Islam now. Correct. So they, they noticed that there was a difference in, in the teachings. So I'm glad that you were exposed to it now. Um, so college life, from what you're saying, played a really important role in your acceptance of Islam. Right, because you, it was an opportunity to read and um, expand, just expand your mm -hmm. mind. And in reading, there seemed to always have been um, something missing um, t for me in a Pan-Africanist ideology. So you were searching for something. Right, and there was never any mm -hmm. um, uh, mention of God um, in their writings. And, and coming from a Christian background, you know that God, God played an important part in the lives of, of individuals. So it was just, that, was, that was lacking. Um, and um, so just searching, 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 and then there were some incidents that in the college, in college that kind of made me also um, want information, and we had a, a tornado um, that came through the college town, mm -hmm. and there was this woman who... Um, and this at NSU? Um, yeah, yes. Um, where she was called the prophetess, uh, but she went to certain businesses and trying to get them to accept God, and mm. all of the people who were mean and nasty to them their business was destroyed. I mean, the storm just went from, it was like just destroying wow. the business, destroying the business, yeah. miss a business, destroy a business. And, um, and trying to get understanding of that event from, from religious individuals mm -hmm. at the time, um, no one seemed to have had a, a real, no uh, answers. No, no real yeah. answer. So that, that's really what fueled the search. And, you know, and Islam answered a lot of questions for me. I'm not, not so much in terms of that, but in terms of just how to live your life. Interesting. So how do you compare Islam then and Islam now in terms of our community? Because I know since 9-11, the community has changed right. tremendously. How do we compare to that? I think one of the things I see now, I see a greater effort for um, community involvement, interfaith um, dialogue. Mm -hmm. One of the things that National Assault always did was to have interfaith dialogue. I think one of the things that uh, one of the one thing that drew me and made me close to Milana Shafai was his involvement in interfaith dialogue, and and it's it's something all the criticism he got early on, but then after 9/11, you saw everyone, especially some Muslims who were afraid, um, run into the churches and then neighbors wanting to get support. Everybody got on board now. Everybody it's got like, on board. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah, so, so that trade is now kind of kind of um, loaded with mm -hmm. folks. Everybody wants to do interfaith dialogue, but um, I don't. I, I think the differences I see now is that we are we're we're building massages all over, but we don't seem to have community life. And community life is the thing that's lacking. One of the um, something that really was instrumental in helping me early on when I reverted to Islam was the fact that at Masjid Sar there was community life. There was something going on all the time, every night. There was always some involvement. But now there seems to be um, that disconnect with community life. And I don't know if it's because um, we have, we don't live in in the same community, um, or what? I just don't understand what what what's the problem. But I know that's one of the focuses of Imam Muhammad. His focus was community life and community involvement. So you know, I think that's the thing that's that I see lacking now: not enough community involvement. And people still talk about building massages, but where's the community? Where's the people? We need to start focusing on building the individuals right, rather right. than the structures. You know, yeah. and I tend to agree with you because we need to really focus on building the community in terms of the people in it, That's you cool. know, and not focus on, on these buildings, which is what we're putting up every corner you turn at. Yeah. There's a masjid going up, you yeah. know, and it's like who you're serving. Well, yeah. And I, I really think that we should, you know, take example from the people who were here before, because the masjid al-Ansar existed long before all these other, so many masjids emerged after. Right. And they seem to be always the forgotten one, that they were here initially. Right. You know, before anybody else existed, Masjid al-Ansar existed. And they incorporated and opened their doors to everyone, no matter what your color, creed, nationality, where you're from, what language you spoke. It didn't matter. That's correct. Yeah. And, and that seemed to be, we're losing that. We're losing. Yeah. We're getting more, you know, into our little groups and based on your nationality. And everybody yes. wants to sort of focus on their own, yes. their own people. Yes, yeah. I, I agree. I concur. But I, I think as long as we keep the focus of mm -hmm. community and community life, it'll, 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 it'll start. I mean, uh, there's a lot of things happening here with Darla Loom and some of the programs that they have and some other organizations, which to me, the idea is fostering community life. 
Right. So we need to start, body. you know, get the word out there and start getting people. And this is one of the objectives of our program to get people to start thinking. You know, don't just sit there and talk about the problem, but get up and let's do something about it. And this is one of our objectives that we hope that will be fulfilled, inshallah. Now let's go back to your um, your educational background. You specialized in law. Right. What made you go into that area? I had an interest in um, school of, of law and engineering. Mm -hmm. um, um, but when I, I played high school and college basketball, and playing college basketball, my college coach, um, they, they kind of set your, your class schedule. And it was, you know, they really wouldn't let you take some of the classes you want to take because they really want to make sure you stay eligible to play basketball. To play, yeah, they fulfill their goals, fulfill, not yours. Right. <laughs> and, um, so I kind of dropped the engineering I, I did because I just wanted to get out of college. Mm -hmm. And um, based upon the kind of class that I'd taken, it's like, you know what, I'm going to be here too long. So let me just get, you know, get a degree that will allow me to get out of college and then go to law school. So I Good. got part of I got part of the dream completely. And is there any um, specialized area that you focus on? Immigration and Immigration. commercial. Immigration. Great. And how have you been able, if you have been able to do that at all, assist the Muslim community with your educational background? Setting up um, organizations, corporations, um, boards of d directors, bylaws, and other and other um, um, legal mechanisms. Also helping um, folks legalize their status here in the country. Um, we've also put on workshops. Whenever there's some changes in the immigration mm -hmm. law, we put on workshops. Uh, and um, again, Darlalum, uh, we we put on workshops, and um, Darlalum opened its doors not only to Muslims but non-Muslims. Um, wow. We've put on workshops when laws have changed, and we've had um, folks who've come up to me and they whisper, "Well, I'm not Muslim. Can you That's help right, me?" You help. And it's yeah. like it doesn't matter. It I mean, it's a good thing you're here. I mean, you know, you know, yeah. you're here, so you know. You, you're welcome to And that's silent dawah anyway, you know, yeah. you're Muslim helping anybody, it doesn't really matter if you need and you ask for help, then right. um, silent dawah is very powerful. Yeah. That's really interesting. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. Please stay tuned. Welcome to Toyota of Hollywood. No matter what your new car needs are, it's our goal to make every step of your ownership experience as easy as possible. Let our professional trained sales staff help you find the right car at the right price. Discover an easy ownership experience at Toyota of Hollywood today. We're conveniently located at 1841 North 60th Avenue in Hollywood, Florida. Eat healthy, eat halal at Ashraf's Halal Meat Center for all your East and West Indian grocery for genuine halal USDA meat. Stop in or call in your orders at 305-654-0195. That's 305-654-0195. Are you tired of calling cards? Are you fed up of those long PIN numbers? Then use Sensible, international direct calling for Sense only. For more details, contact the Al Hikmat office at 954-986-0158. That's 954-986-0158. Estine Caribbean Market, East and West Indian Grocery for all your halal meats, fish, and vegetables. Call to place your order at 954-961-6160. That's 954-961-6160. If you would like to advertise your business on Al Hikmat TV online 24 7, Al Hikmat website, and Al Hikmat Monthly Muslim Magazine, please contact the Al Hikmat office at 954 986 0158. That's 954 986 0158. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Tune in to Who's Who in America and in your community. Hosted by Sister Naima Khan Ghani with extraordinary guests every Sunday night at 8.30 p.m. on www.alhikmatlive.com. Tune in for Friday Khutbah at 1.30 p.m. Broadcasting live from Daral Ulum Institute, Pembroke Pines, Florida on Al Hikmat TV Online. Jashne Amade Rasul Allahi Allah Tune in to Young Muslim Talent in America Hosted by Salma Muhammad With talented kids from all over America 
every Saturday night at 8.30 p.m. on www.alhikmatlive.com. Allahi Allah, oh, jashne amade rasool. Allahi Allah. Thinking of doing Sadaqa Jariah for your near and dear ones? We recommend you to sponsor the Origin of True Islam brochure, the Genealogy of Prophets, or the Surahs and Zikr to be recited daily as Sadaqa Jariah for your parents who have passed away. Or you could sponsor one of the items for yourself, Fi Sabilillah. For more details, contact the Al Hikmat office at 1 800 804 0267 or 954 986 0158 or email us at alhikmat at alhikmat.com. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Al Hikmat TV. If you're now joining us, my guest today is Brother Nasheed Severe, attorney at law. We left off where Brother Nasheed was talking about immigration law and some workshops that he set up in different communities. Brother Nasheed, we're talking about these workshops. Tell us a little bit more about some of the services that you would provide for the community. We will, um, first anyone who has an immigration issue, if they um, don't have the funds or ability to pay, if they speak with Milana Shafai, we will give them a consultation to see if there's something that can be done in the system. Um, but what, what he's done over the years is whenever there's been some changes in immigration law to set up a workshop so people from the community can find out how they're impacted um, and if in fact that they can be assisted or helped by the changes in immigration law because we have a, a large immigrant community here in South Florida. We definitely do. And I know that's a very sensitive issue for a lot of people because they're scared to come out and ask questions, you know, that may be um, in the back of their mind. So how do you go about dealing with the sensitivity of the issue? Do you do these workshops as an individual or is it done through an organization? As an individual. And basically it's just basic general information and, and it's not really to generate business but it's to inform people and so they can be aware of what their rights are mm -hmm. and if they feel that they need a uh, a private consultation and we'll set that up also. Okay, so they can get this information. We'll make sure that we post this information, your name and your number at the end of the program in case anyone is looking and they may have questions, they can feel free to call you. Is yes. that correct? Yes, okay. and we'll set up a, an, an, an office visit for them. Uh, and just to clarify for our audience, this is not associated with any particular organization. No, no. This is something that you have to right. taken upon yourself to offer to the community. S Florida Bar now requires us to do what they call some pro bono community service, but it's something that we were doing long before Before that, that. okay. So it just kind of fits in so nicely, <laughs> right, right? right? Simply because <laughs> we just have community that, that has a need and everybody doesn't have the ability to pay. Okay, that's really interesting. Now, do you focus on only Muslims or is it open there for everyone? Everyone. Everyone. Yeah. And how do you go out setting up these workshops? Do you contact the different areas, the different masjid? Masjid uh -huh. or, or community-based organizations. And how successful, what has the response been like currently? Because I know it's, it's a bigger issue now than it was maybe, you know, since 9-11. Now you find the main concern now is just families because they're, they're, every time there's a bill passed mm -hmm. or, or put on the floor in Congress, um, you have folks thinking, well, well, oh, there's an immigration law. That's how does it affect me? And, how, yeah. and it's really just a bill and it may go nowhere. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they've gone nowhere. I mean, there have been no real changes in the law for years now. So, but there have been bills presented, but nothing has really um, been passed. And you're right, because I think it really still is a fear in a lot of our immigrants, you know, whether they're Muslims or not, it, that fear in them that um, they don't know where to turn and who to ask. Right. So it's good at educating them. Right, and also I think there's a fear of Muslims that because I'm Muslim that immigration is going to look at me negatively, and no. No, because you're Because I'm not going to ask you is that true or not no, because I no, know no, that no, that's, no. the phobia is out there, you know, especially yeah. since the 9-11 issue. Yeah, it's, it's like it's you're being individual. stereotyped. No, it's, a, it's, yeah. it's an issue, but it's, it's, it's not a problem. I mean, because they're aware of the sensitivities and if, they're out, if they are out of order, rude, disrespectful, mm -hmm. then, you know, they have people that are above them. But, you know, as long as they're honest and every, they're doing things the correct way, they should have no problem with immigration. So what's your advice to them? Don't be scared. Don't be scared. I mean, if you have, if you feel that you, you're, you're entitled to some sort mm -hmm. of immigration benefit, apply for it. 
and you'd be able to assist them and yes. guide them in the right direction. That's correct. So don't be scared and don't be ignorant as well. That's correct. Because they need to ask questions they're, they're in order right. to they're know. They're right. They're yeah. right. And uh, one of the concerns we're, we're seeing is that um, now the local police are, when they're stopping individuals, they're contacting immigration. Mm -hmm. So you shouldn't be driving around without the proper documentation. You shouldn't be driving if you don't have a driver's license because if you get stopped, they're going to contact the authorities. Right, and that has nothing to do with whether being Muslim or not. It's just if you're not following the law, regardless of who you are, you're going to that, get caught. That's correct. And for men, you know, men don't really have the problem. It's our sisters with, mm -hmm. their, with their dress that usually uh, make somebody aware that, oh, they're Muslim or not Muslim. And have you dealt, as you touched on women, it, you know, it stirred up in my mind, have you dealt with any issues dealing with the Muslim women and their dress and maybe their persecution based on the way they dress in terms of employment or any other area? No, we haven't. We have not heard that. Um, heard of that because most of them respect the mm -hmm. women and the way they dress. They respect. You have a few nuts, but for the most part, they respect. So no them. discrimination cases or discrimination no, issues no, I, or anything I've, that has been evident to you so no, far. No, that no, I'm not saying that. Okay. Are you also currently? Do you do work with care because they're also involved in you know explaining to to the Muslims to the community their rights? Not not as, really um, because care is a separate organization okay. that, that that's doing a lot of good work in the community. Yeah. So you have never considered, or would you consider doing through doing some of these workshops through CARE? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If, if CARE, care, if they ask you, not a, not a problem. So where would you like to take this? Because I like the idea of the workshops, and you know, I don't think it's out there as often. Yes, there may be not be any new laws that are being passed, but at least letting people know to sort of alleviate their fears a little bit, you know? I'm, I'm available, and I know other attorneys who would assist me um, in, that, in that endeavor. Okay, great. So just, you know, for our viewers to keep that in mind, that you're available regardless of who or what the That's circumstances, right. just That's let right. you know. Um, what about your other community involvement? Because I know a big part of what you do is helping the Muslim community, the, the, the legal aspect. And uh, I know, because I've been here a long time, when I hear Brother Nasheed Sabir, your name is always linked with some organization helping to set up the legal aspect of it. What else is out there? Tell us a little bit more about what else you do. Well, right now, Master Nassar, and it's been ooh, about maybe more than 10 years, we do a premarital course that's a, from six to eight weeks. And couples who are interested in marrying, we have a, a course that we take them through, and at the end they get a certificate. Now, when getting married in the state of Florida, if you have a premarital course, mm -hmm. I think there's a waiver of the, the waiting period, and I think there's a, a reduction in, in the, the fee. In the fee, I think, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, um, we from, from providing that for like more than 10 years, I believe. And as Sister Leah um, Pasha, Bacha and I, we, uh, we, we put on that. Um, and that is still ongoing? Still ongoing. Well, have you thought about taking that elsewhere to other massages? It would Because be, it's a great idea. W well, we, uh, we, have, we will have our first immigrant couple after uh -huh. Ramadan that we'll be doing the premarital course for. But it's, uh, it's a great course and it deals with I don't, I don't have all the specifics right now, but it deals with a lot of aspects of, with couples. Uh, we just finished one last night. Uh, we involved the imam in the first session, but mm -hmm. because Imam Nasser was sick and traveling, we ended up involving him at the last session. But we, because we do it based on, on the first session deals with his, the Quran and what the Quran say about, about husband and wife. Because I noticed, you know, in a community, and correct me if I'm wrong, I, 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 I think that the divorce rate of our Muslim couples seem to be increasing. Is that a myth or is that reality? That's reality. And um, I, we've only had, our idea is not to tell people whether or not they should get married, but we did have one couple that went after they went through the session, mm -hmm. they decided that they were not ready to get married. Seriously? Yes. <laughs> so it has, you know, so get to know before, because a lot of times, you know, because of culture and so many other reasons, they don't really know what they're getting involved in, what marriage really involves in terms of Islam. Communication. I mean, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a big some, thing. It's a big thing, yeah. And that has been, um, I guess it's about six to eight weeks. And the sessions last from an hour to two hours. We've had some three-hour sessions because you have to work through issues. And because some people have mm -hmm. the, the wrong perspective of what married life should be like. And again, just to clarify for our viewers, this is totally confidential. Everything that's done is confidential. Um, the, um, all of my business as an attorney, what, when I speak with folks, what they tell them is confidential. And the, the person that I, I do it with, um, she's a social worker, mm -hmm. and she also understands that um, confidentiality. confidentiality. Yeah. And a lot of it is getting the, 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 the participants to, um, to communicate with one another. 
You know, I really like that idea, and I, I hope that you would be able to take this out of Al Ansar and let's spread it to the other communities, and maybe you know set something up where we can have one in maybe every every masjid in in South Florida. There is a package that we have mm -hmm. and um, um, uh, that we use, and we could work with people to get them and train them and and do them. I think that's a great idea. I'll be your first trainee. <laughs> <laughs> So what other, I really like that idea though, what other um, involvement in our activities, Cause I, I love that one, really stands out in my mind, the premarital counseling. Well, one of the things we're trying to do at Master Star also is get men more involved and more active. Oh, good luck with that. <laughs> well, how is that coming along? It's coming along pretty good. I mean, it's really? coming along pretty okay. good. We have a men's group. What's your secret? <laughs> well, it's, um, I guess, not getting frustrated at first when you don't have the kind of participation that you would like, mm -hmm. um, but I think now we have about 20 men strong and um, and yeah, they're involved. They wanted to come 20 out. 20 men strong, I like that phrase. They want to do things around <laughs> and mash it, clean up, yeah. whatever, you know, they're just there. So you just get them involved, not necessarily, okay, let's have a class and a formal, because that sort of turns people away when you tell them to come and in, you know, into a formal setting to learn but just get them involved coming around. Let's help around the masjid. Right. And whatever that you think, whatever you see yeah. as a problem or issue that you want to work on, let's just go for I'll it and get it. it done. We all, you all have some great ideas, Al Ansar. You know, you really need to market this outside because if it works for you in that community because you've been in existence for a long time, I seriously, you know, urge you to take it out there to these other communities because it works. I, I agree. Yeah, so we need to get on that. Once this, you know, this program is over, that's going to be your mission to get that started and network with the other masajid and organizations in the community, inshallah. So what other challenges do you see our community facing now? And I go back to 9-11 because I like to compare. Things have changed so much since then. What challenges are we facing right now? I, I think one of the, the main challenges is um, our, our right and our freedom of religion. And um, we have people that are trying to impede upon that right mm -hmm. and their freedom of religion. And it's all, in my opinion, it's just politically motivated for folks to maybe get a political advantage because Muslims have been in the community forever. I mean, and again, you know, the Nation of Islam started in, in the 30s or 40s, in the 40s, I believe. And so even, even that organization has been involved in the community and the Sajids have been in communities forever. So this wanting to restrict the building of massages and, and our ability to worship, that's something that's, that's an idea that's foreign to America. Mm -hmm. And we cannot allow it to manifest itself. So since 9-11, have you had an increase in the number of cases that you've had to deal with? As a result no. of that, it has absolutely no, nothing. No, and I, I keep I going it, back to it because I like to compare. I think it's just sporadic. Um, um, I think some communities, and, and I Let's take the Pompano Beach um, community in, in, for an example. Um, there was concern about them building a, or expanding a, a, massage, a masjid. Mm -hmm. Well, the masjid that was there, the community, the people in that community, was, they were upset with the, with the Muslims because, um, and, I, and I know this because my wife worked for a company and, a, and she had a, one of her coworkers was con had a gripe because on Ed and on Friday, people would park on his lawn. Mm -hmm. And, you know, may, maybe those folks are from a culture where lawns didn't it's matter. It's okay, yeah. Yeah, but, it, you know, people have their grass and their plants and their shrubbery, and they don't want you disturbing That's them. because right. they, they Muslim or not, regardless, yeah. Right. yeah. And so they had, they, so, so those were some of the problems they had. Okay. And, and um, I mentioned it to the ma'am there at the time, saying, look, you know, you know, some of your neighbors are upset with you because of. They don't, they don't dislike you, but they're upset because of. And, you know, people put cones down and they would move the cones and park their cars there and they were upset. With so them. it's the act that they were doing, not necessarily that they were Muslim. They were Muslim, right. And I think that's where the, the confusion comes in and, it, right. you know, the misconception get, right. gets out there to the community. Oh, it's because I'm Muslim you're targeting me. No, and no. that's the first response. It's not usually that. Yeah. It's just not usually that. It's just mutual usually respect. Usually it isn't, yes. It's usually mutual respect. And even the, there was a pastor of their black pastor who was causing a lot of problems and he was familiar with Muslims, and which was kind of surprising. Um, and um, I know one individual who, because he was a former military guy, and one of the, an imam who moved, now he's in northwest Florida, was telling me the same pastor that was making all this noise about wanting, not wanting masjids, the masjid to be built, um, he saw him at the VA clinic, and he told him, assalamu alaikum. 
Well, the pastor the did, same pastor. yes. Yeah, so it's like, what's wrong with this man? But it's just, you know, who's, yeah, I guess you need to follow the money trail and find out who's behind him mm -hmm. to make him make this stir and this stink. Right, so it's just all getting the publicity and the media oh, coverage okay. out there because we we just blasted as being, you know, on such a negative level right. that but that's the first thing people tend to think of. But most people have a positive, if, if, you, if you can get them to really open up mm -hmm. and talk, they, would, they have a positive image of Muslims. You, you find, you don't, I mean, you find very few people who have a personal negative um, in, or, and keyword in, personal. They right. make it personal. Yeah. I yeah. mean, where they, where, they, yeah. where they personally have something that yeah. where they can say, well, Muslim did something to me, and they did it because they were Muslim. So we, we really, you know, as a community, need to look deeper when we hear a story that's being blasted out there. We need to look deeper into it and not just take it for what it's worth, you know, on the surface. And get more involved in yeah, the community. Get involved. I mean, really get more involved in the community because the more we get involved with the mm -hmm. community, the more the community will embrace us, and they, un and they understand and respect us because we want the same things we want the same things that they want. We want to feel safe in our community. We want our children to be able to enjoy their community. We want better schools. You know, exactly. You know, you Who know, wants what's best, just well, like they do, just yeah. like everybody else. And they We're know no that. different. Then, you know, I mean, they know. Besides that. our belief, yeah. that's right. So we need to be conscious about our behavior as citizens of this country, as residents, as Muslims, people living in this community. We really need to be conscious of our behavior and how it impacts other people, especially the non-Muslim yeah. community. Because, I mean, personally, when speaking with people mm -hmm. that have negative ideas about Islam, when you talk with them and you try and find out the root of it, they can't tell you. But it's usually something that they heard on TV. Yeah. And, and that put this negative taste in their mouth. So don't take it for face value, just dig a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to ask you a very sensitive question mm -hmm. pertaining to donations, because I know that has um, created a lot of fear in Muslims now when it comes to donating to different various organizations. Can you shed some light on that? Because I know, you know the media has gone with that in terms of blasting I, I, the community. I, I, I think the safest thing to do mm -hmm. is to, to deal locally, because internationally, um, right now, we're just, we're just not certain as to what's going on internationally. We don't know what, what, international what involvement certain international organizations have, mm -hmm. and that's my concern. I'm not telling people don't donate internationally, right. but if you're going to donate to an organization internationally, you need to know and make sure that that organization is a, a organization that's doing Legitimate, that. and that's exactly what, you know, what they say they're sending right. the money is exactly what right. they do with it. And I know, especially with the month of Ramadan coming up, people, Muslims especially, are more apt to opening their pocketbooks and giving. And the first question is, well, what are you doing with my money? Who do I send it to? So your advice to them would be to give to the local organizations yes. here. Now, what if these local organizations would like to send the money abroad, but they've let's say, done the background research and legitimize where it's going. Would you advise that that's okay for them that's to okay, do? That's okay, because once you do your due diligence, that's right. it. Right. I mean, you do your due diligence and that's it. They can't hold you accountable for something that you, that you just, no way you could have known. But you do your due diligence and that's it. But give it to a legitimate local organization and let them distribute it um, internationally. So would it make a difference whether it's cash or check? Because that's another question that a lot of our people ask. Well, I mean, it's it's really paper trail. To, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and I and I think it's better for you if you if you gave gave uh, a check. A check. So that way, you'll know where you'll have your your you know, your paper trail as to who you gave it to. Okay, because then people are saying, okay, well, I don't want it to be traced back to me. If I give you the cash, that's going to be better because then I have you know relinquished the link with well, that. So me, I'm not if sure. If, if, if there are what's afraid, best. if there's a yeah. fear, I would say whatever you feel is best. Comfortable for you. with. Yeah, yeah, and, and cash, cash, give cash. Any last-minute advice you'd like to give our community out there? Because you talked about your involvement, you know, as a youth. Any get advice? Get, get involved. involved. Get involved. Just get involved and stay involved in the community. Two simple words. Get involved. Yeah. Let me add, get involved now. Get involved now. Yes. Develop community life. It certainly was a pleasure having you, uh, Brother Nishi. Time is unfortunately up, and I hope that you would be able to join us again for another program. Thank you very much. And that brings us to the end of today's edition of Who's Who in America and the Community. Join us again next week where you get to meet ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Until then, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Hamdalillah, Hamdalillah, Walla ilaha illallah, Walla ilaha illallah, Wallahu akbar, Wallahu akbar. 
سبحان الله سبحان الله حمدا لله حمدا لله ولا اله الا الله ولا اله الا الله والله اكبر